I will grab the quick selection tool and try to select the model. I'm going to make sure the left side is properly selected. I can hold the Z on the keyboard to zoom in and refine my selection. Keep in mind that at any point, if you want to deselect some areas, just hold down Alt and brush over the areas that you don't want to be included in your selection. Okay, looks good to me and now I will go up here, click Select and Mask, I will zoom in a bit and use the Refine Edge Brush to make sure I include some more hair in my selection and in the same time I make sure that the rest of the face and body have a good definition on the left side. Again, I'm not focusing too much on her right side. When I'm done, I make sure the smooth is set to 0.5 and the output is set to selection. I press OK and then Ctrl plus J to duplicate the selection on a new layer. And as you can see now, I have the model on her own layer, so I'm done with this. Now let's take care of the background. I want to maintain this layer as a smart object in case something happens, so I will press Ctrl J to duplicate this one as well. And I will hide the bottom one. Right click on this one and choose Rasterize Layer. I need to do this step because otherwise I can't use the content aware fill. So now I need to get rid of the model and keep the background, so the safest and quickest way to do it is to load the selection of the model by holding down Ctrl and clicking on this layer. I have the selection, I will hide the top layer because I want to see what's happening with the background layer. If I go to Edit and Content to Wear Fill, you will see that Photoshop does a good job filling in the area with the correct texture, but I still have a contour of the subject, so how do I solve this? I need to expand my selection with some pixels. So cancel here and then go to select, modify, expand and I will choose 15 pixels. You can see now that the selection was expanded. Now if I go again to edit and content aware fill, you will see that this result looks much better than the first one. So I will hit OK and this is the result. To make it look better, I will select the healing brush tool, I will sample different areas and try to clean up the background and get rid of the areas that don't look so good. I recommend you to sample from different areas if you want to avoid creating repeating patterns on the background. Okay, it's time to fill in the empty space on the right side of the document, so I will simply choose the Move tool, go to Edit, Content Aware Scale, hold down the Shift, and stretch this out. I want to blur the background, but I would like to control the blur value at any point in the future, so first I will convert this layer to a smart object, and then go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I will enter 6 pixels for the radius. If for any reason I would like to change the blur intensity, I can just double click here, and I can easily modify the value. That's the benefit of converting a layer to a smart object. So let's move on, we still have some work to do and I'm gonna start using those smoke brushes right away but before that I need to duplicate this layer with the subject. I'm gonna apply smoke brushes on both, however there will be some differences. I'm gonna rename the layers very quickly, one and two, and with the second layer selected, I will go to Filter and Liquify. And now I will stretch her hair and make it big. This part is so fun and looks so weird, but when the smoke is applied, it looks great. Sometimes the weirdest things in Photoshop can turn into great things, so don't be afraid to try them out and experiment. Okay, I'm happy with this, let's hit OK now. What I'm going to do next is to hold down the Alt and add a black layer mask to this layer to hide it completely. And I will do the same thing for this layer as well. So now both layers are hidden because of the black layer mask and for the moment I will work just with layer 1. It's time to use the smoke brushes, I have them loaded already, but when you do this, you just make sure the brush tool is selected, just press B 
and then right click somewhere on the document, click on the small icon and then on import brushes. You browse to the folder where the brushes are and Photoshop will import them. You will find them usually at the bottom of the list. Okay, so first on the layer one, I make sure the mask is selected and from the mask properties, I just lower the intensity. This will help me to see where I'm applying the smoke brushes. Then with the brush tool, I right click, navigate to the smoke brushes folder. I select the first one and let's see how to apply it. I will make sure my foreground color is set to white. You can easily reset these by pressing D on the keyboard. And then instead of rotating the brush, I can hold down R on the keyboard and rotate the canvas until I find a good spot to apply the first brush. Make sure you are at 100% opacity and flow up here and then just press once. Great, now I can rotate again, maybe make the brush smaller and press again. And right now I'm focusing on her face because I want to use different brushes to unveil her nose, lips and chin and in the same time to create these abstract smoke trails on the hair. When you want to use another brush, just right click on the canvas and choose a different one. I will choose number three for the moment. I'm rotating the image again to find a good spot and then click once. So I will repeat this same procedure a few more times. Okay, I think this is enough. You can take the density slider and bring it back to 100%. And let's move to layer two. I'm selecting the mask and lower its density until about 70, 75%. And now I repeat the same procedure like on the previous layer, painting with white on the layer mask and revealing parts of the liquefied effect where I stretched out the model. The key here is to use different sizes of the brushes, so I'm constantly changing both the size and the brush. And also trying to paint only inside of the margins on this layer. This is the reason why I try to lower the density of the layer mask. Okay, I'm finished with this. And a quick tip here, when you want to rotate the document back like it was in the beginning, is to hold down Shift plus R and rotate the image. It will jump once at 15 degrees, so you can easily put it back in place to be straight. I can go back now to a regular brush, select the layer mask from layer 1, and with a flow of 20%, just paint over the parts of her face where you want to bring things back to 100% opacity like it was in the beginning. Or if you want to hide some parts, you can press X to switch from white to black and then paint over the areas that you don't want to appear. Guys, this is how you can use brushes in a creative way to achieve a dispersion smoke effect in Photoshop. I think it's cool. This is the final image. If you enjoyed this tutorial, press the like and make sure you also press the bell to get all the notifications from my channel.